Yeah, welcome back to The Breakfast. And the conversation continues here. And uh, the first big issue here is about the kidnap of kids from northern Nigeria to states in the eastern part of the country. Now, it's it's quite, uh, you know, good news. The Kano State Government on Monday announced that they had rescued about seven children who were kidnapped from Kano State and were taken to Anambra. You know, so the, the, they said the children were found in orphanage homes in the state. I don't know how that came about, but uh, that's the facts that the state's commissioner of information Mohammed Gaba is saying and this is confirmed that the parents would soon be reunited with their uh, the kids will soon be reunited with their parents and joining us now is security analyst Dixon Osaje. Good morning and thanks for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. Good morning. Good morning. So we see that this issue is a recurring one. It's not the first time, you know, kids have been, you know, uh, kidnapped from northern Nigeria, especially during times like the Salah celebration, where there's like, you know, lots of kids, you know, out playing in the streets, you know, ma making merry. It's not the first time. Over the years, we've seen cases and cases like this. How bad is this problem in regards to our nation's porous, you know, interstate borders? Uh, thank you very much, Aneta. I think uh, it's really worrisome, very, very worrisome, because uh, uh, we can't have a nation whereby our children are suffering from uh, uh, kidnapping, abuse, and uh, child abduction. Uh, you see, in 2003, uh, during the Geneva Convention, uh, Nigeria was a signatory to the Child uh, Rights Act of 2003. And uh, after that, uh, some of our country, our states, implemented that, uh, those uh, Child Rights Acts. Uh, uh, Lagos State implemented. Um, we have issues with uh, uh, some parts of the North. They didn't implement that Child Rights Act of 2003. Uh, just last week, uh, the Castina State uh, Governor implemented the Child Rights Act of 2003, and it was passed through the National Assembly. You know, uh, we must get it very clear if there's no uh, rules and regulations, I uh, will suffer casualty. And that is why we are suffering casualty because uh, our children are going through pain. Uh, no more, uh, there, there are no uh, effective uh, security mechanisms. Uh, it is very essential that uh, we upheld uh, the Child Rights Act of 2003 so that those people who go against the uh, act of these uh, children will be well punished and uh, decimated. Okay, well, um, like, you know, people would always say it's not, you know, the lack of laws that we suffer. It is a problem of implementation and political will to, uh, to make sure that these things um, are put in place. Um, the report uh, the, also said, um, and this is maybe the shocking part for me, that since 2016, about 118 um, kids have been um, uh, missing or stolen, kidnapped uh, from Kano State and other parts of the North and uh, moved to other parts of Nigeria. It, isn't that figure meant to be, isn't that figure enough for a national emergency? Uh, thank you very much. Very, very sensitive question. The issue here is this. Can you hear me? Yes, the sir. issue here is this. Uh, we don't have value to human lives, you know? Uh, you know, when we look into hierarchy of protection, uh, human life comes first, information comes second, image comes third, properties come last. Because why property comes last is because property are irreplaceable. Human beings are not replaceable. When you are gone, you are gone. When you are dead, you are dead. And that is why in hierarchy of protection, priority must be given to human life. But here, two, three years ago, we we're giving priority to cows. We we're giving priority to animals compared to human lives. When you kill a cow, 10 human beings will go. When you kill two cows, 20 human beings will be killed. We don't have priorities to human lives. When we begin to have priority to human lives, we will be able to checkmate. Like you rightly say, it's not all about implementation. It's all about respecting the values of human lives. Until we begin to put value and place values to human lives, we will continue to suffer all these things. Like you rightly said, when I was in primary school, I, I was a victim of a metacine in the North then. We, we, I, I'm still living with the thoughts and trauma of the early days in the 80s. We all would have metacine come to our primary school, kidnap children, and go with them. Then uh, Buhari was the president of this country, and I think uh, the military did a good job then. To date, we are still suffering this. It has been there for a very long time. That tells you that the problem we're having is leadership problem. They are not ready to take the bull by the horn to ensure that they give priority to human life. Until we give priority to human lives, we will continue to suffer this. You already said 180 human beings, not cows. We're talking about human beings here. 
Look at what the Americans did when a human being, uh, one of their citizens was uh, kidnapped. The uh, Navy sea flew in and rescued the person. We must place priority to human lives before we begin to uh, get things better in our country. Now, one, one major thing we've seen consistent in these stories is that, you know, these guys, these kids were found in orphanage homes. I mean, that's a bit unsettling. And I mean, how does this come across to you? And is there an explanation for it? Uh, you know, the issue is that we have orphanage homes everywhere. And uh, the reason why we're having orphanage homes is because we don't have vetting processes. We don't have uh, uh, information management processes and uh, 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 intelligence gathering. Anybody can just go out of job and the next thing he will use his father parlor and uh, put a signboard that this is an orphanage home. Anyone can just lose his job and set up orphanage home. Orphanage home is not something uh, you can just set up uh, without the consent of the government. Like uh, myself, I, I have a private security company. Uh, before I started operation, the presidency gave me a license of operation. Why did they give me those licenses? Because human beings will entrust their life to my company's hands for protection purposes. And if I don't have the license to carry out that duty, whatever I'm doing is illegal. So child, uh, what's it called, orphanage homes must procure license from the uh, uh, appropriate quarters so that they'll be able to carry out their duties. And the license must be renewable year in, year out. And we must have investigation team that will be visiting those orphanage homes. Otherwise, you will have orphanage home filled with a bunch of kidnapped uh, children and they will begin to suffer losses. Is there any um, red flags pointing, you know, you know the, the part where it says they were found in Anambra State? Is there maybe some things that we are not aware of that might be going on in Anambra uh, with regards to child trafficking? You see, uh, Anambra has it has a history of uh, of of, uh, of child trafficking and uh, child uh, uh, abduction and uh, kidnapping. I, I think uh, when I was in the military, uh, we happened to uh, contain some uh, criminal elements in Anambra State. That was in the 90s. But one thing I want to understand, I want us to be sure, is this: uh, we 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 must uh, you know look into intelligence. Intelligence is very very essential, and that is why our policing systems needs to be proactive and not reactive. You know, when you have a proactive policing system, you'll be able to gather information from the public. And that is why trust psychology must be upheld between the citizens and the police. Because nobody wants to give the police information any longer. Nobody wants to tell the police what's happening. Nobody wants to tell the police uh, what they see or what they saw. Because everyone is minding their own business. We don't need to start minding our business. We must mind the business of others. While I was growing up, if I messed up, my neighbor would beat me up. Before, uh, when my father comes, my father will beat me. When my mother comes, my mother will beat me. So I will have three beating on one of us. <laughs> but, you know, in our present days, you don't even touch a child, which is very good. Why are we looking at uh, 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 suffering this place? It's because we, don't, we are no longer our neighbor's keepers. We are no longer our neighbor's friend. We don't take care of ourselves. Everybody minds their own business. That is not the value of Nigeria. That is not the car value of our country. Uh, when you look into the ethnography of Nigeria, uh, Nigeria is sitting on the 923,000 square kilometers. We have over 250 ethnic groups, over 371 tribes, and over 520 languages. Nigeria alone is a risk. The languages we have alone is a risk, a uh, natural risk on itself. So we, we, we appreciate God that we are still surviving this country. Uh, we need to uh, look into uh, brotherliness. We need to look into uh, neighborhood. We need to check ourselves. And people who are caught on child trafficking or child abduction must be given maximum punishment. You know, people learn from what they see. When I carry out an act of child abduction, I should be sent to jail for life. When I'm sent to jail for life, you yourself, you will not even venture into that business because you know the consequences. That is going to mitigate the spirit of child abduction and child abuse. Now, you did mention a very succinct point, and uh, it's, it's, it basically emphasizes the Nigerian or African saying that it takes a community to train a child. And in this instance, for communities and nurturing children, how would you suggest or advise you know, local communities, community leaders, to put hands together to ensure that they are protecting the kids in their community? Talking about community policing now. It's very complex. I remember when I was taking some children a class uh, about security in a church, one boy was just messing around, playing around. And I said, hey, come here, come here. 
the mother said, hey, 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 excuse me. Excuse me, don't shout on my child. Don't shout on my child. Please, 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 please. You know, that shout was not to abuse the child, was to call the child to order. We have that uh, uh, parental issues. Now, going by your questions, we need to look into two factors. And government must look into these factors as well. We need to look uh, into parental absenteeism. Uh, you don't, don't bring up a child to this world. You know you cannot take care of that child. It is very, very essential our government set up an institution that will look into parental absenteeism. Parental absenteeism does not really mean that the father of the child is dead or the mother of the child is dead. You can be alive, both parents can be alive and absent in the uh, 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 upbringing of the children. So parental absenteeism is very, very essential in uh, curtailing this uh, spread of a child abduction. Because when you go into uh, into statistics, most of these that are child abduction, uh, they suffer from parental absenteeism. That is the fund fund fundamental uh, issues, you understand? So parental absenteeism must be looked into. You know, like in the United Kingdom, uh, when a child is one, two, three years old, the United Kingdom, the government begins to take care of that child. When you mess up a child or when you abuse a child, that child will be taken away from you permanently. But yeah, we don't have our government looking into child uh, security. They don't look into child uh, welfare. We need to cultivate child welfare and take parental absenteeism as a very, very serious offense. Don't bring up a child you cannot take care of. If you know you cannot take care of a child, zip up and go, go to bed. Yeah, Not so bringing children and putting those children at risk. Any child you see moving around the street, Anita, today without a parental value or a parental uh, upbringing, that child is a potential threat to the society. Our government must look into the streets, child abduction, child abuse, child trafficking, child uh, uh, trading, people trading on the streets. You see six, seven years old child, even in Maryland yesterday, while I was going uh, uh, to, to, to my office, I saw a six years old child walking on the express road there. And we have government flying around that road. Pick up that child and seize the child. We need to set up institutions that will take care of our children. Our children are suffering every day. Our parents, uh, those parents of those children, they don't care. And most of the time in their Marjorie camp, that is where you fetch most of these people because their parent is not there. Are you telling me your father will let you go through such kind of pain in his right thinking senses? So right. we need to look um, into parental activity. There's, uh, there's numerous details uh, that um, obviously need to be um, investigated and need to be, you know, um, um, opened up, you know, in, in conversations across the country. Uh, child molestation also is something that, um, you know, you, you, um, we should look out for. Uh, the birth rate, um, it might be a scary thing, uh, thing to talk about, but the birth rate in certain places um, uh, of the country, uh, you know, that don't have the financial ability to maybe take care of these number of children is something that we should also look out for. But before we get there, um, you're a security expert. If you are going to be investigating this issue, what questions will you be asking in order for us to get to the bottom of this issue and ensure that um, the perpetrators and everything that has to do with trafficking children across Nigeria and maybe even outside Nigeria um, is stopped? What would be your, the steps that you would take as an investigator? Well, uh, for me, what the first step I'm going to look at is because in any given situation, you need to look at the foundational causation. The first foundational causation is where is the child coming from? The child was coming from a home. Who is the father? Who is the mother? All right, he has no father, he has no mother. Who is the caretaker? Who is the capable guardian? Okay, the X, Y, Z is the capable guardian. How did this child uh, uh, left your your custody. Okay, I don't have the uh, money or the funds to take care of this child. That was why I gave this child to, to uh, 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 orphanage homes. All right, go to the orphanage home. Before you take up this child, do you have the capability to train this child? Yes, I have the capability. If you have the capability, then why is these children going through this pain or going through this molestation? Then you will be able to identify the root causation of this issue. After I identify the root causation, then you identify the problem. Because if you don't identify Identify the problem, you cannot proffer solutions. Mr. Asaji, the, 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 the challenge here is not about the orphanage homes not being able to take care of the children. The problem here is the fact that the children are there in the first place yes, and have trafficking. been declared, yeah, and uh, were declared missing in Kano State. So the challenge here and the investigation you know, that I'm asking about is finding out how these children got to Anambra in the first place. Is there a child trafficking ring in Nigeria that needs to be shut down immediately? 
Are there people selling children in Kano State? Are there people buying children in Anambra State? Are there people who you know, make it easy to transport these children from the north to the south? And, and so th that's you know, what I'm trying to open up here. Um, in order for us to completely shut this, you know, operations down, if, if there is anything like that. You know, that is where uh, uh, our reward and punishment comes to play. Because child trafficking is happening every day. Even as we are talking now, some children are in transit. Are you with me? Yes. So, uh, looking at uh, what went wrong, uh, if you want to trace it from Kano State, uh, what, uh, what, what were the, uh, the, the, the means of transportation? How were they moved from Kano State? Who received these children? Now they need to go from the root cost analysis. Where did they uh, take off from? That is what I'm saying earlier. If they, uh, we are taking from Kano State, who moved there from Kano to uh, uh, Anambra State? Who were the receiving factors? So we need to get full hold of the uh, 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 from, from the, uh, their point of exit and their point of arrival. Now, if we get hold of their point of exit, how come some children we have been migrated? or we have been moved from Kano State without the consent or knowledge of our security agents. And before you leave Kano to, Kano to Anambra, you will come across a lot of uh, police checkpoints. You will come across a lot, uh, a lot of military checkpoints. Are you telling me within those period of time, there are no sensitive uh, security agents that could smell a foul play or, or with these children or were they uh, put in a body bag? No, they were transited from Kano. And that is where security agents must be very, very sensitive. If you are on the highway, you must be sensitive about the movement of people. The problem is, uh, uh, is elasticated. We cannot, you know, track what the, uh, the, the issue is. But for me, the root cause analysis is where are they coming from? Now, the government should look at where they are coming from and uh, the, the people that receive them. Now, yeah. the only way we can receive this, uh, resolve this issue, uh, my brother, is that the people that transported them from Kano State must be arrested and the people that received them in Anambra State must all be arrested and they should be given maximum punishment. Okay, right. talking about punishments, there are actually laws in Nigeria. You know, we've talked about how we have actually have the laws. It's implementation that, you know, the bottleneck is. So we have the laws that penalizes child trafficking, you know, human trafficking in Nigeria. But when you check the news, how many people are actually being penalized? Even the story about the, you know, uh, recovery and rescue of seven children in, uh, in, in Kano State, from Kano State to Anambra. We just heard about the orphanage homes being, you know, raided, the kids being rescued. But the missing link here is the prosecution of the perpetrators of this act, isn't it? Uh, for me, I have not really uh, seen uh, uh, where uh, we have a lot of people being punished uh, when they commit such kind of crime. I, I have not, we've not had a lot of track record. This issue is happening so magnanimously in the north and in the northeast. I was born and bred up in the north, and that is why, first of all, if the government wants to look into this, they need to uh, eliminate Almajiri camp. Almajiri camp, you go there, you see millions of children, and the northern allies, the northern leaders, they are happy. That they are having almajiris in their camp, giving them a, a water to drink and bread to eat. That is really, really a contributing to the high speed. But for me, if we really want to uh, curtail this issue, uh, we, we need to we need to look into implementation. And implementation is not the problem, Anita. Even if we implement it, people will still go ahead and commit this crime. That is why we need an effective punishment mechanism in place. If we have an effective, but that what what is three years? You take someone's child, you transport someone's child, and you are being punished three to five years imprisonment. It should be life imprisonment. All right. Life imprisonment. Okay. Dixon Osadji, thank you so much. We're, we're out of time. Thank you for speaking with us. Thank you. And uh, for joining the breakfast this morning. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, we need to also appreciate uh, you guys for doing a great job. And also, our uh, national electricity should do very well. We are having light problems at this uh, Kenya. Sorry for the poor uh, lighting here. Sorry, please. We understand. We understand. Thank, Thank you once you. again. Um, I'm, I would also just quickly mention you that I think one aspect of this that should not be ignored is being able to manage the narrative about this story, being able to manage the conspiracy theorists, you know, that would also arise from these stories, being able to manage the religious and tribal sentiments that would come out of this um, um, story. There's, um, I saw, you know, some views yesterday referring to a girl who was kidnapped from, Anam from Anambra and married off in you know, somewhere in the north. I don't remember what state that was, you know, and then I saw people talking about ritual killings and it's, it's, it's a lot, you know, so we, we also should try, you know, to manage the conversation to ensure that it doesn't break it down doesn't into a full yes. tribal and religious um, um, war. But anyway, yes. um,
That's all we have for you on that uh, conversation. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, we're moving next to talk. I need to check. We need to talk about the DSS alleging a plot to create a religious uh, and incite religious crisis in certain parts of Nigeria. That comes up right after the short break here on The Breakfast. <laughs>